is Jeff Walker of TBW Channel 7. His Excellency, the Governor of Western Australia, Sir Charles Gardner, ushered in the television age in this state when he officially opened TBW 7 on October the 16th, 1959. We'd like to show you that opening, but first, let's see something of the history of TBW. How it started, its growth, its development to the stage where Project Teleview became a reality. It all began with an application, an application to the Australian Broadcasting Control Board for a license to operate a television station in Perth. June 1958, the actual start of the television age in Western Australia. Exhaustive inquiries, research, facts, information, reports, documentation. After months of work, an application for a television license was completed and signed. Then came the lull, the wait. Would the application be acceptable? October 1958, the staccato beat of a teleprinter punched out a message of success. Quote, I am pleased to inform you that pursuant to the provisions of the Broadcasting and Television Act 1942-1956, I am now prepared to grant to TVW Limited a license for a commercial television station in the Perth area. Then the real activity began. Plans were drawn up, staff engaged, tenders invited, equipment ordered, building plans prepared. And the sign went up in the terrace, temporary office of TVW Channel 7. Files, reports, drawings, documents, they increased daily. The pile mounted and mounted but this early activity was just a hint of what was to come. February 1959, Bickley, 15 miles from Perth, the site for the transmitter tower. Building contractors soon discovered that the ground was almost solid rock. Then the first blasting to prepare for foundations to take the weight of the giant 475-foot tower. March 1959, cement was poured for the concrete tower foundations. The work went on, the tempo quickened, and progress was evident at last. The scene changed. Tuart Hill, 15 miles northwest of Bickley, became the next focal point. Clearing began. Trees fell. Bulldozers and cranes pushed and heaved. Here, virgin bush had covered loose sand. Hot work this in the late March heat. From studios to be built here would emanate live shows, newscasts, films. It would be the nerve center of all production. April 1959. All cleared at last, and now to level it. Foundations determined and set down. Trenchers dug. Drainage systems installed. Access roads constructed. May 1959. Back at Bickley, work was well underway on the construction of the tower. Slowly, surely, the mighty metal members were pieced together, just like a mammoth Meccano set.
1959, from across the seas came the liner Orense, bearing 80,000 pounds worth of transmitter equipment and instruments. After careful unloading, the precious cargo was packed onto a fleet of trucks, then convoyed with police escort through metropolitan highways and city streets to Bickley, where building construction was well underway. Here it was unloaded, uncrated, inspected. How did it travel? Any damage? No, it's in good shape. And so all was clear to begin the laborious process of installation. Simultaneously, the tower was growing taller, despite tricky winter weather, which made things difficult and hazardous for the riggers. Meanwhile, at Tewart Hill, all was on schedule. The first framework of the building was up. Here would be the nucleus of the production staff buildings, spacious studios, film processing, projection rooms and change rooms, news department, administration wing. All were taking shape quickly now. As further transmitter material arrived, it was quickly taken to Bickley, where technicians unpacked it. Then, highly trained engineers tested the delicate electronic equipment. July 1959, still higher with the tower. It was now at the halfway mark. Our news cameraman went up in the rigger's cage to get a bird's eye view of the surrounding countryside. Well, the riggers had to do this trip several times every day. From an aircraft, we get a different view of the structure which was becoming a landmark. July the 10th, misfortune. Near tragedy as the top portal collapsed, the rigger's cage crashed to the ground and five men were injured, though not seriously. Delay was inevitable. Trade transmissions must now start later than scheduled. The top portal of the tower was buckled and would have to be replaced. New components were urgently fabricated in Melbourne and rushed to Perth by road. And soon, the setback was overcome. As technicians and engineers worked steadily at Bickley, so too did the team at Tewart Hill. Plasterers, bricklayers, electricians, painters, carpenters, all pulling together to carry out one of the swiftest major construction jobs ever done in Perth. installation of the first equipment in the studio building at Tewart Hill. While workmen were still active on building construction, around them technicians unpacked and handled the delicate equipment. August 1959, more technical equipment, this time flown in from England. A super constellation was diverted on its regular London to Sydney run to deliver many thousands of pounds worth of urgently required equipment. The constellation usually touches down at Darwin, but was rerouted to Perth. The cost of transportation? One pound sterling 
per one pound weight. The painstaking task of installation became the major job. Technicians and engineers worked unceasingly. Days, nights, weekends. Unloading, unpacking, assembling, wiring. Cameras, monitoring gear, master control equipment. Meanwhile, the production staff got busy. Auditions started for announcers, newsreaders, entertainers of all descriptions. They came in their hundreds from all corners of the state, all hopeful of finding their place in this new medium of entertainment. The first week was devoted to aspiring announcers and newsreaders who sat under the harsh glare of arc lights and faced the impersonal eye of a TV camera. They read news and a commercial in which they tried to sell a product. As applicant followed applicant in quick succession, the auditioning staff made notes and reports. Next, the variety auditions, acts of every type, a cookery demonstration, a performing dog, ventriloquists, mime groups, comedians, pianists, dancers, and singers. Entertainers rehearsed, 
and the interminable equipment test went on. Now, all efforts were aimed at October the 16th, opening night. Geared for action at last. And there's plenty of activity in the film department as the programs for opening night are made up, checked, to the telecine room, where they're loaded onto projectors. It's getting close now. Soon, all will be ready. Meanwhile, at Bickley, the chief transmission engineer begins the final checks. Tests and yet more tests as the technicians move down the long line of equipment ranks. and business leaders arrive for the opening. They were greeted by station executives. Now all is ready. All departments alerted. minute check in audio control. Now over to the control room. Second to air time. Stand by on the floor. Stand by telecine. Fifteen seconds. Focus up camera two. Ten seconds. Dissolve to two. And His Excellency alive. W Limited, Mr. C. G. Friend, and the general manager, Mr. J. W. Crothers. Good evening. On behalf of all of us here at PVW Channel 7, I'm very pleased, and I must admit just a little bit relieved, to be able to say at long last, welcome to television in Western Australia. Because most of you haven't seen regular television before, our aim tonight is to show you a selection of the type of program we will present in the future. Some of these programs will be from overseas, and some will be local. For instance, later in the evening, our own staff will present a live variety program which was written and produced specially for opening night. And there'll be some news and weather information too, prepared and presented locally. 
Our overseas programs include some of the favourites of world television. First you'll meet the beaver. Now the beaver's a, a small boy and like most small boys he's always in trouble. Then there's television's best known father, Robert Young, who is the star of Father Knows Best, a, a quite delightful family comedy. For adventure, we've selected Sea Hunt, the story of a skin dancer, and we've also been able to obtain the services of that uh, very well-known detective lawyer, Perry Mason. Now last, but in our opinion certainly not least, we're going to present for you tonight television's number one cowboy, Marshal Matt Dillon of Dodge City. As you'll see from tonight's first ever episode of Gunsmoke, Marshal Dillon gets himself into quite a bit of bother. And, uh, indeed, at one stage it looks almost as though his career will finish before it starts. Well, we were pleased and grateful to discover that uh, Marshal Dillon got out of this trouble and went on to make a further 197 episodes of Gunsmoke, all of which we will present for you as the weeks go by. We sincerely hope you will enjoy the entertainment we've selected for you for tonight and for the future. Now I'd like you to meet the Chairman of Directors of TVW Limited, Mr C.G. Friend, who will introduce His Excellency the Governor of Western Australia, Sir Charles Gardner. Here is Mr Friend. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the board of TVW Limited, may I say, first of all, how much we recognise and appreciate the honour of having with us this evening His Excellency the Governor, Lieutenant General Sir Charles Gardner. Before introducing His Excellency, let me mention that we of TVW are pleased and proud to present to you tonight the state's first official television. As would be expected, the accomplishment of this has been a somewhat long and highly involved operation. The move to form TVW was initiated some 18 months ago by West Australian Newspapers Limited, and the intention was to have a truly West Australian company. After much work and organisation, the aim was achieved, and today, TVW Limited has over 2,000 shareholders, 99% of whom are West Australians. It is of interest that no other commercial television company in the Commonwealth has a comparable degree of widespread local ownership. The general manager and most of the staff are West Australians. Some of those who created the station have been engaged in television in the eastern states and in countries overseas. The others, we have trained ourselves at TVW. We are confident that you will enjoy the results of their efforts. And now it is my great honour to introduce His Excellency to Charles Gardner, who has kindly consented to officially open TVW Channel 7. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency the Governor. Tonight is a very important one in the history of our state. It was certainly another milestone to progress, and it is bound to affect, profoundly affect, the lives of the majority of us. As you know, there are people who decry television, people who say, uh, that it perverts the minds of the young and dulls the mind of the not so young. But I don't count myself among those. Of course, it's true uh, that television can be r wrongly used. But that is equally true of almost any new innovation. <coughs> For example, uh, nuclear energy. You can use nuclear energy, if you like, to make atom bombs, 
and if you like, you can use those atom bombs to blow ourselves to pieces. But equally, you can use nuclear energy for peaceful purposes to the immense benefit and increase in the standard of living of us all. Television, uh, properly used, can, I think, be of great help to us. It can increase our interest in sport, if indeed uh, an increase in, uh, in appreciation of sport uh, is necessary in a sport-loving country uh, like ours is. But in any case, it can increase the appreciation of sport. It can also bring uh, to us uh, the great world figures, bring them almost into our home. And by so doing, it can increase our knowledge of their personalities. For example, only the other day on television could have been seen uh, the President of the United States and the Prime Minister of Great Britain having a, a chat at checkers together. And if it's true, still true, and I think it is, that to understand all is to forgive all, then television can have the most uh, profound effect on the problems that are troubling the world today. I think, too, that it can be a means of healthful relaxation in the home. And by bringing people together, uh, looking at television, it may uh, avoid different members of the family going otherwise to separate places of entertainment. And that was how Project Teleview began, grew, and was finally achieved. The TVW7 story is similar to many others, not only in Australia, but in all parts of the world. We hope you enjoyed our story and meeting the men and women who made television in Western Australia possible. You'll see their work in the future. We hope you enjoy it. In the meantime, best wishes from TVW Channel 7 in Perth, Western Australia. <laughs>